Oh, Goodyear now house. It's at Goodyear. Oh, Goodyear now house. Yeah. Well, they, if we're going to show them the dealer locator, it's not going to work. Uh, that's right. Offline. Right. So the. Uh, well, now that you're in, turn it on. You can do it from the bottom. Bottom. What? Gesture. Top. Top. Oh. <laughs> multi finger. No, multi finger. Five. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Soccer guy. It's all in the over. gestures. Okay. Here you go, Jeff. Right, it's more Jeff. Okay. okay, let's see. Alright, let's go. Here you go, why don't you show him something else? I'll get it going. It won't, be, it won't take too long. Yeah, it'll happen immediately since you're not projecting it from the whole room of people. <laughs> right. It's proportional to the number of the inversely proportional to the number of viewers. Yeah, I looked away. That's pretty much as far as what we've done. You know, there's a few other things, but it just kind of shows you the capabilities. Yeah. Um, That's great, though. Just, are you, you guys, I mean, you guys are messing here about how we go about setting up the project and. Um, yeah, we should probably take a look at that. Yeah. The one thing we probably can't show on the device. <laughs> well, yeah. what I can, t can tell you is when you're ready to set up a project, it's out on phone go. There's mm, two tutorials. Okay. okay. Uh, it's really not. Uh, it's not too difficult. Okay. Eclipse is the hardest, yeah. just because of the amount of software you have to download. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 But if you're going to do, obviously, iOS, uh, you got to have a Mac. Yes. And you can, and Eclipse actually, it works better on Mac, too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can't use GCC for uh, Mac or for iOS development? Nope. Nope. Because what I was talking about, that is clearly in the Apple documentation, will get rejected immediately <laughs> using GCC. Oh, dear. But, but, but the biggest thing that for me have found out the hard way is never, ever, ever trust the simulator in either Apple or Android because the <laughs> because neither simulator works at all like the real thing because that we will have developers working on it they will tell us it runs perfectly in the simulator that for will run it sure enough works perfectly in the simulator but the app Sometimes it sometimes it won't even start up straight on a device, wow. a real device. So you just really cannot go by the simulator at all because that it's not even good for the simulator even to get the basic layout. Because for example, straight on out for the straight on out for Apple, that the simulator, the current version, straight into extra. 4.6 that it neither simulates the 4S nor the 5. So that they only give you one screen size in the simulator. Right. The, the now for that screen size is neither one of those two screens. Hmm. So this is why we say testing is a challenge. Right. It's a challenge uh, unless you have you know a good number of devices. Right. You, you really need to test on the devices. You know mm -hmm. you do what I do. If anybody has a smartphone, you just hide it. Exactly. <laughs> hey, let me show you something cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we borrowed smartphones from all over Goodyear. And someone said, yeah, they got a new one. Like, hey, bring it here. Yeah. Somebody with pickpocket. You want to get that smartphone going? Well, no, I don't, well, I don't, I don't take it away. I don't take it away. I think permanent. We got iOS 7 running on John's old iPhone 4. That's, that's oh, our oh, iOS 7 oh, test oh, device. It's going to ask your test case. <laughs> um, it actually all works right. better on your 4 uh, in iOS 7. It's sometimes it's hard to believe we're a Fortune part. 500 company because <laughs> we have literally Goodyear, and there's no one else from Goodyear here. Um, Goodyear has made zero investment in this platform thus far. We have done this all. Okay, no, that's not true. We bought two Macs. Yes. And we bought Why not? Two, two iPads. iPads. That's it. That's yeah. it.
Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> now you can't post this. No, but so I can edit it. <laughs> so, so let me justify this. Let me justify it. Blacked out. Let me put my manager hat on and say so. We pulled this off without zero investment because we didn't know the long-term feasibility. It didn't make yeah, sense yeah. for us to go no. out and buy an I, SAP module to develop mobile apps in because we didn't know what was going to be the next thing. Yeah. So it was a good, it was a guerrilla startup and it worked. Yeah. Right. Um, well, but it's an accomplishment though. Like I mean, with less resources, you were able to make more of it and also demonstrate viability. So I mean, you're actually making the case for uh, future development at, at Goodyear. Maybe more, may, maybe more integrated apps where you know. Maybe you're, you are a customer, you know, and you want to use an application, an on, on, on premise application, but developed by Goodyear. Yeah, so Goodyear becomes a, becomes a software, you know, provider, if you will. And in addition to uh, producing and you, tires. Yeah, and you, well, you corrected. So it's the vision. Like our, you know. our group over in uh, Europe. Yeah. They're, they're researching how, how are they going to do their mobile apps, and they yeah. concluded that they were going to use phone apps. There you go. It's like, well, hey, <laughs> just reuse what we, we done. Uh, we need to build a phone yeah, we all help you with that. Right? And, and we have a tires subsidiary. We have a, a company <laughs> yeah. in exactly. Arkansas that delivers fleet services. Right. Um, we and flow. we're developing stuff for them. Yeah, we have so two apps. it kind of opens up oppor more opportunity at Goodyear outside of the regular business, the core business. Oh, we no. and no, we're, I mean. Don't mistake us. We are never going to become so proficient at this that we're going to sell our services to others. Oh yeah. Um, well, no, that's that's not true. I mean, you know, you don't we'll know. You cannot you cannot predict that, right? We'll sell them to our Europe. Yeah, <laughs> part yeah, of the company, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Part, yeah. But all part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's tedious. It's it's a lot of work. Right. I mean, you know. You're right. Keep it going. And that's what we can offer. Is we do right. a lot. Oh, of here's work. the dealer locator. Okay. Yeah, this is the dealer locator. Oh. This does, this does have a, a few more UI uh, pieces, like you see the, uh, the recognized three stripe up there. Yeah. Let you know there's more. So that's not the best slide out, uh, yeah. and it's not, the jQuery, it it's not the jQuery mobile one. Yeah. But it's it's a jQuery query uh, Yeah. Now, how big is the team that works on this? Like, how many people? How many energies are being used outside of the machines? Like, you know, um, we, like we, uh, developers. We have three contractors right now. Three contractors. So we've been four. We've had four max at one time. Okay. Cool. We've never had really more than two working on a single project. Um, oh. Okay. When we had four, we had two projects okay. going on. Right? Okay. Uh, we also and, and they're in El Paso, Texas. Okay. Uh, we also have. We've had up to four. Fellow Russian programmers, okay. never more than maybe one at a time. Okay. Doing some of the back end stuff and some of the so marketing wanted the ability to make updates to this, whether they mm -hmm. be new brochures or whatever themselves. They wanted right. not to have to rely upon us to do it, which we are yeah. fine with. Yeah. yeah. So we had the Fellow Russian group basically get a website. Right. A website. Yeah. Update that there stuff. you go. Uh, like a CMS system or something. Right. Poor man CMS. <laughs> we call it CMT. Yeah, we would call it a CMT because we don't want to. It's not a system; it's a tool. Oh, okay. Uh, and we don't want to give any it's impression that it's a CMS. But it's okay, that's nice. Probably yeah, yeah it looks looks pretty cool. Pretty you stick. They release a new tire, um, and the next day they have ten brochures all on that tire. Video, nice. On that huh. video, but all the brochures, cool. the tire image, um, all the features yeah. and benefits. It just shows up. The videos require us going through the Apple Store to do submission. All that other stuff. Does not, which is nice, makes it yeah. a lot nicer. Yeah. yeah. Stri straight down now, the cool thing is that even with the CMT, it's possible to store the brochure straight up onto the device locally because it goes out and with the device that it does thing to download all that content instead of just displaying it. Mm. Nice. And if we stop selling a tire, they just flip a switch in SAP and it disappears from the app. Nice. Yep. Hmm. So that, that uses the, the um, SQL Lite? Yes, SQL Lite. And, and that, that seems to work well. Right. Um, How do you access the SQL Lite database? Do you have 
<coughs> something between it, or do you do it directly in the code? Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a plugin, so you're making calls yeah, via the plugin. Yeah, but now for you're making calls via plugin, but it's pretty much JavaScript. <coughs> you have to add, add that now for you've got some JavaScript statements that basically that they submit SQL queries to it. straight on now. But then there's a special phone gap plugin that's sort of that sort of that sort of does the translation to the database, but it's just pretty much JavaScript. Okay. So that's a little bit of abstraction between the basic SQL queries is using JavaScript to access it. Yeah. yeah. That's how all their all their plugins work here. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that somebody in Java and other what it means. Yeah. Like. Okay. So I'm just curious which language you're using for the actual interface. You know, it's all JavaScript. Every, every interaction with the cloud in it is just almost JavaScript. So you could go, if you go out, look at the home site, you can you'll see uh, a section for plugins. And we did samples of how to, to use them. All right. Well, I think that's really all the different types of functionality cool. that we build into our apps. Um, but, you know, I think you guys, you know, using the jQuery model, that's that seems to be moving nicely. Mm -hmm. That's maturing nicely, and that's going to be very popular. That's why we picked it. We know there's going to be a ton of support behind it. Yeah. Uh, Matt and jQuery. Uh, and Foam App, obviously. That's, that's really going to work, too. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. And cool. You use jQuery in this because it's uh, uh, specifically a um, tablet app or this one. It degrades nicely to the one that you've got up right now. This one here, is, yeah. it's, you know, we do have a, uh, a web version of this, uh -huh. um, just for internally, because they like, there's more features to this that are showing. Yeah. Uh, but they, yeah, they like the functionality, they want to make available people that have Yeah, so we yeah. have a browser nice. version. And cool. it, yeah, it's pretty much, it really didn't take much time to take mm -hmm. this and, and create the browser version. Yeah. Where can you use the browser version, or is that? Uh, it's in turn. It's on the Goodyear network. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it proprietary. Is. Yeah, and, and it's, it, it's not so much proprietary, it's just there are way, a poor man's way of doing security because mm -hmm. you can find this on the web. You can go to Goodyear, uh, GoodyearTruckTire.com and find all this information on the web. So we weren't about creating that. Even the uh, JavaScript there? Uh, no, I don't know what that's written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's mostly like JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. On the Goodyear that's website? That's like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what you would see is we use you know we use Google Maps. Google is all this is. Yeah. This is just purely Google Maps. And then you're using JavaScript to work with Google Maps. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a JScript or JavaScript pop-up right there, right? Uh, uh, that's something provided by Google Maps. Oh, is it really? Yep, yeah, it's all Google is it Maps. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They've redesigned well, it's, it's it. Yeah. But the, this exact thing, thing there's, yeah. we have a, there's the information not seeing us a lot of um, dealer information, who we sell to, the number of tires. So sure. there's just a lot of back end stuff that the public doesn't need to see. Right. That tire sales people find very, very, very useful. Right. Um, so we made it available to them. And cool. once they get on the Goodyear network, they can, they can see it, but you gotta be on the Goodyear network. Okay. okay. And, and actually, in my mind, <clears throat> that's where this has the most utility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tire stuff is cool, the tire data is cool, mm -hmm. and there is a certain flash that uh, someone who's going to a fleet or a commercial truck dealership can talk to and show them and like, oh yeah, look, the dealer's doing cool things. But the real value in this, I think, is with the, the tire information that the dealer has, mm -hmm. uh, or the sales information. They can go to an area and they can see everyone right. that we sell to, a lot of the companies that we don't sell to, uh, and overlay that and walk into a dealership and say, so, here's, here's your fleet information. And here's where you drive, and here's all the services, the dealerships, the service dealerships that we offer around where you drive. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that tells a pretty compelling sell story. Not unlike what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to say, here you are, here's your trails, and here's information about those trails. Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. And our developers, they, they, they develop this stuff using Chrome mm -hmm. initially before they even go into the into Xcode or Eclipse. Right. So they get it to the point where they think it's ready. Just it's quicker. Yeah. Yeah. It's more efficient. 
and then get it into the you know Xcode or yeah. or Eclipse and start running it in the simulator. Yeah. yeah. Which again, like we said, is not 100 percent accurate. Right. Um, the next step is they send it to us using because they don't have the devices. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so you do the testing for them. Yeah. yeah. Because the cool part is even in Chrome that it's possible for them to straight go now to work with the SQLite database and all that. So, really? so yes. Oh. So they can do all of that in Chrome because it's purely JavaScript that's talking to that SQLite database. Mm -hmm. So right. that's the neat thing. Yeah. And but the biggest reason why they do Chrome is so they've got access to the so they have access to the debugger tools. Yeah. Because basically that straight into Xcode or Eclipse that it's very hard to debug JavaScript. Yeah. So it's much easier to do that through a browser. I shouldn't confess that I did uh, web development for two years before discovering uh, debugging tools. Oh, just text. <laughs> <laughs> awful. Awful way to develop. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought, boy, this was so much easier when I was using real languages. No uh, way, there are no way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something more than yeah. Uh, in council in law. In <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like a real, you know, debugger like you said, like a program. Step through. Yeah. yeah. You, can set that makes some, you can set breakpoints and stuff. I usually yeah. use Firebug and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. You put in the code. Yeah, that's what he means, yeah. Yeah. For action. And then there's some extra plugins. Most JavaScript is now very obscure, and in a lot of websites, they want to hide everything off and then separate up, you know, separate files or sources sure. and other things like that, and obfuscate it through, uh, you know, third party plugins and things like that. Right. No one wants to do in house stuff and they can avoid it. Cool. It's true. That's how it is. I agree. You find a plugin. Yep. Yeah, you're losing. Um, another thing, right. when, you, when you do start, when you do start uh, using PhoneGap, um, you got to be really careful with these plugins. Um, no. If something's just written by somebody that's cool out on the web and is licensed through uh, MIT, you just don't know what it's going to do. And we ran into a few that really caused us. Series headaches because you have had this code that you would include in and it would corrupt the app in just places like you know, like why? Why is that not working? Why is the app crashing? That's, that's why one problem is not popular. And it was just this plugin. Huh. On a, in a whole different section of the app that was causing this other part of the app to crash. And so that's just something you have to be careful about. Oh, that was the worst period of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> awful. Oh, because we got like, when's it gonna be ready? I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> That's what I started. If uh, we knew what the problem was, was we, did, we might be able to answer that question. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. We're looking at the people in the organization. Does anybody know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much for, for the welcome. demonstration. So is that app out there right now, Dealer Locator, or is that internal? That's no, that's the Goodyear. Uh, that's it's called Goodyear Truck. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Goodyear Truck. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah.